Hi everyone, <clears throat> this is Hillary Ellers from Lightworks Studio and I'm so excited about our lesson today. I know I'm always telling you, oh this is a great lesson, but this is a great lesson today. <laughs> We're going to go into reincarnation and I feel this is a topic that <clears throat> people are usually very interested in uh, if you believe in reincarnation or even if you think about the possibility of it you probably have quite a bit of curiosity about your past lives and so in our lesson we're going to be touching on lots of uh, ideas about how to tune in to your other lifetimes. And it's such a long lesson, we're gonna be doing it in segments. And I'm not sure yet if it will be three or four segments, but we'll see as we go along. It's the longest lesson I've ever written, so we'll see. <laughs> <clears throat> I was born into a Southern Baptist family. And um, if you know anything about the Southern Baptist tradition, it's pretty rigid and pretty strict. My mother was um, a woman of very deep faith. And one of my very favorite memories from my childhood was when we all said our nighttime prayers together, my brother and I and our mother. <clears throat> my mother's voice was always calm and um, very deeply sincere. When she prayed, she spoke as if God was her personal friend. And um, I feel that made an imprint on me very deeply, really. And I wanted to have God as my personal friend also. I wanted that same kind of relationship my mom seemed to have. By the time I was a teenager, I had loosened up a lot and I joined the Methodist Church and it was somewhat more liberal. When I was 24, I began to go through a very deep spiritual crisis and I started having a deep, powerful desire to understand God to understand who is God, what is God, what is my relationship with God. Um, and I began to pray for an understanding of that. So every day during the week, when I tuck my kids away into their naps, <laughs> I would go into my bedroom literally get on my knees and I would pray. And I prayed with great intensity because I felt it. <laughs> and I asked for the wisdom to understand God, to understand my relationship with God and to understand more about my path in this lifetime. Around that time when I was in that fervor, you know, that spiritual intensity, a lot of strange things began to happen around my home. Um, for instance, I'd be in the kitchen, uh, you know, fiddling around and the lights would go out. And it wouldn't be just that the lights went out when I'd go over to the wall and look, the light switch had been pushed down, turned off. So I'd turn the light back on, go back 
to doing whatever, and in a little bit, the lights turned off again. And I would go over to the wall, and sure enough, the light switch was turned off. Poop, I'd turn it back on, go back to work. This would happen over and over. And interestingly, it wasn't scary. It didn't have any kind of negative feeling at all. It just stirred up my curiosity. About that time, the doorbell would ring. And I'd go to the door. You can guess, no one was there. <laughs> so I'd shut the door, go about my, my little whatever I was doing, and in a little while, the doorbell would ring. <laughs> and this happened over and over also. So I began to think, you know, what's going on? All of it culminated one evening when I was talking with my husband. We were sitting across from each other in the living room, and I was winding up the alarm clock. Some of you are probably too young to remember, but we used to have to wind up the alarm clock. I was sitting there doing that talking, and I set the clock down on the side table by me, removed my hands, and the clock went flying across the room. I might not have believed it happened, except my husband witnessed it also. Well, at that point, I felt someone must be trying to communicate with me, someone in spirit. And um, now I have a different idea about what was going on at that time. I feel it was a time of deep spiritual awakening for me. And I was actually opening up, even not only spiritually, but on an intuitive or psychic level as well, my energies were just starting to open and it was causing these psychokinetic events. So, um, somehow, I uh, interestingly went on a vacation that year and I met a woman while I was on vacation and we just fell immediately into very deep conversation. And my story about all the strange things that had been happening just tumbled out and I told her what was going on. So she took me <laughs> back to a back room in her house where she had a nice bookcase and books. And she said, my husband won't let me keep these books out where people see them. And she reached on her to her bookcase and pulled out two books and gave them to me. And they were books about, and you may know of him, Edgar Cayce. If you don't know about Edgar Cayce, I really suggest you investigate. Uh, he was a, an intuitive medium. He's not alive anymore, but he did amazing work. He did health readings for people. And he would literally lay down on a sofa and there would be a woman taking notes, writing down what he said. Back then, uh, I don't think there were tape recorders. And he would tune in to the person who wanted a health reading. And the first thing he would do is find the person, like remote viewing. He would find where the person was and he would describe it. And he would describe the day, the time, where the person was and what they were doing. And uh, I think that was sort of a stamp on the work he did because people would say over and over, he was absolutely right. <laughs> that at that time, on that day, that's what they were doing. Pretty surprising, but maybe not. <laughs> but his work 
uh, has been written about and I really suggest you find out about him. Now, uh, as I was talking with this very nice woman who gave me the books, she asked me if I ever thought about reincarnation and I hadn't. I mean, I was a very spiritual person, but I hadn't thought about reincarnation. And she explained it to me in her own way. And all of the sudden, I mean, it made perfect sense to me. It was just like, yes, of course. And all, I, I began to feel like there must be a reason for everything that happens and all of the hard things and the hurtful things and the painful things that happen there must be a reason and I literally began to feel my world shift I really did that concept this concept of reincarnation changed my life forever I began to feel all the pain that I had been holding about how much injustice there was in life, how innocent people seemed to suffer, children suffered, animals suffered. All of the sudden, all that pain, and I could feel it, began to melt away. And I began to have a very, very different outlook on life. I want you to think about if there were a reason for everything that happens, how much different your life would be if you believe that. I believe it now completely. And sometimes I find that I try to uh, tell people that and to help them, you know, I'm always trying to help people. So uh, I'll tell people that there's always a reason. And uh, at times people actually get angry with me when I say that and they'll go, this just happened, you know, this just happened. And uh, <clears throat> Things don't just happen. I want you to know that. Your physical life is for action. You're involved with physical things. And your beliefs, your feelings, all of these color your actions. And your physical life is all about that. The inner life we have after we die is for reflection. And in the inner world, when we are on the other side of life after death, we contemplate our physical life. We look at it, we think about it, we uh, look at our plans we had for that life and then we look at what really happened and how do those compare. We look at what kind of progress we made as a soul. Or maybe we look at where we missed the mark in some ways. And <clears throat> I would like you to um, not be hard on yourself when you look at your life and you feel you've missed the mark. It's um, very, very important to know that just like target practice, <laughs> really, you have to miss the mark a lot of times before you learn how to hit the bullseye. And um, life is like that for us. 
<clears throat> over half the people in the world believe in reincarnation. About one and a half billion people believe in reincarnation. So it's a very uh, dominant belief system for humans. It's the belief, reincarnation is the belief that every human lives many physical lifetimes. That we are born into life, we live, we die. We recede to the upper levels, the afterlife, and at some point we are born again and we live again in a different body. And we do this over and over. The idea behind it, or the <clears throat> concept for why reincarnation happens, is that we are human until we learn everything we can learn from being human. We learn all of the self awareness that being human offers us <clears throat> and after a while when we have reached a certain point of self-awareness and we can live our spiritual beliefs because you know it's easy to have spiritual beliefs and it's another thing altogether to live them I don't know if you find that, I do. And a lot of times, or sometimes anyway, maybe not a lot, but sometimes I catch myself and I will go, now, is this really what I believe? And if it isn't, I try to correct my actions. But it's easy to slip into just reaction, you know? I'm sure you know. So, <clears throat> once we have absorbed all that we can from being human, and the idea is that in your journey through humanness, you play every role that is humanly possible. Uh, you are the victim, you are the perpetrator. You are rich, you are poor. You know, you have advantages, you have no advantages. Uh, there's every extreme we live through. You're free, you're imprisoned. <laughs> Everything we live through, you're healthy, you're fragile health-wise. Every possible human condition before we finish being human, we become familiar with. And through that, we learn a great deal about ourselves. When you're going through something difficult, um, I encourage you to ask yourself, uh, not so much, why is this happening? Although that's a good question but more, what can I learn from this? What can I learn from this experience? And what you can learn is why it's happening. <clears throat> I want to recommend a book to you. It is a book by Dr. Ian Stevenson and it is called 50 cases suggestive of reincarnation it's an amazing book he did a lot of research on this book and uh, very interesting you know cases are cited once a human 
really become saturated fully with the human experience and we learn all that we can learn from being human. We move beyond the human kingdom and we move into what is called the kingdom of masters. A master being is someone who has reached a state of uh, enlightenment in which they no longer have to come back in and live a physical life but in the beginning a master can if they wish be born again come in and help humanity and the master beings are the teachers the leaders the helpers those who support humanity there's a certain point in development in which a master being can no longer hold the physical body and they cannot come in because their consciousness is vibrating at such a high and fine level they cannot support a physical body so they no longer can come in in a body and at that point the way they help humanity is from the other side of life. They are the inner teachers who uh, direct energy toward the earth, toward groups, and toward individuals. I want you to compare the idea of reincarnation with another idea, transmigration. Um, Transmigration is more or less a Hindu belief. And it's the idea that a uh, being does come in and out of life, in and out of life, picking up different bodies. But in the idea of transmigration, the uh, journey is scattered. In the idea of reincarnation, the journey is building and progressing. For instance, in transmigration, someone may be a human and then they are a fly. <laughs> really, literally. I mean, there's all this jumping around. And uh, reincarnation, if you are a human, almost always, there are rare, rare exceptions, but almost always you will stay human and you will grow as a human until you become a master being and you leave the human kingdom. So we're going to stop here, and I hope this is just a little appetizer because we've got a lot more information to bring through in our next lesson. <laughs> Thank you. And so let's meditate, and we're going to have a little guided meditation we'll do together and i hope you're writing about your meditations in your journal i'd like you to do that so in this moment find yourself comfortably seated in your body if you're laying down, you're comfortably laying in your body. Perhaps this is the first time all day you have made time to really pay attention to your body. and just feel what it feels like to breathe. Feel yourself breathing.
and feel how good it feels to breathe. Your breath connects you to all things. Every incoming breath is bringing a soothing wave of relaxation through your entire body. Feel your body relaxing. Feel your muscles letting go. Every muscle grows longer. Every outgoing breath is carrying with it all of the tension of the day. All out and away from you. All of the tension flowing out and away from you. And find yourself relaxing even deeper. From this very deep place of relaxation, you are in touch with many things. Imagine now that you are standing in a circle, holding hands, with each person beside you. And imagine that each of the people in this circle are some of your other lifetimes. Just breathe deeply and observe the circle. Watch who you are holding hands with and look at each person surrounding you in the circle.
and just notice whatever catches your eye. How are your other lifetimes dressed? Are they men or women? Are there any children in your circle? Perhaps you passed out of life as a child. Give thanks for these connections you have with your circle. and feel energy moving around the circle, moving through each body here that you have inhabited and moving through the body you now use. Just feel the connection Give thanks for this connection you have with your own inner circle and know that you will grow more and more familiar with each of these lifetimes you have lived. Gradually now begin to return. Just give thanks that you have been allowed to be aware of some of your other lifetimes. And as you return, find yourself very safely grounded in your own physical body, your back, and bring with you all that you have experienced. And when you are back, let yourself move 
you can stretch and wiggle, <laughs> rub your hands together, rub your face, rub your legs, and stretch. Welcome back. <laughs> Take care now. <laughs>